yeah, that's me, everybody. I'm Chris. Happy Thanksgiving uh, from the U.S. So really just probably David, maybe one or two of the other people on the call. Josh is but here, hey, too. Got to give credit. And others. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Thanksgiving all around the world. There you go. It's Turkey Genocide Day here in the U.S. <laughs> so let's take a look. So we're going to follow our tradition. This is, I think, the third or fourth year in a row we've done a uh, list formatting demo on Thanksgiving featuring the uh, – the turkeys here. So we've got our turkey site, our gobble gobble site. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of things. So the turkeys, uh, you know, of course, anytime you're trying to prevent a genocide, you're of course going to use Office 365 to manage that and coordinate your efforts. And of course, that's what they're doing. So as part of that, they've created various pages over the years. Uh, you know, they've got several different authors doing stuff. Uh, you know, they've got like pages that do the video thing. I think we showed this a couple of years ago, right? Like this is a list formatting demo and you can go look that up. But one of the things they found difficult is managing the site pages library, right? So this particular site doesn't have a ton, but as you can imagine, some sites, especially when you start mixing in news and pages all in the same library here, it gets a little nuts, right? I'll zoom that just a little bit. There we go. So we're going to take a look at a couple of ways to make this slightly better. And of course, we're going to use formatting. Surprising. Yes. No, not really. All right, let's go. So we've got this by default. We've got this by author, and it's got this stuff here and that's okay what we're going to do is we're going to create a whole new view we'll just call this wow we because that's fun all right now one thing to note is that uh you might think oh you know it'd be awesome if i come in here to this tiles view and then i start editing that right so i come in here and i go to format my current view and i'll be jur, jur, what right i don't get the actual design mode if i switch to the design mode i don't get my card designer I don't actually get anything working here. If I try and do that tile format, it just doesn't work. So there's no gallery view customization here in the site pages library. So we cry, we cry, we're very sad, but we'll move on from it, right? So we're going to find a way to make this a little better. The first thing to note is there's actually a lot of information uh, in this list that just isn't displayed by default. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the show high columns. And we're going to add them in here. So here's a few I like. I like the banner image URL like the promoted state. Uh, let's see, I like the title because this is lovely, the actual file name, but a lot of times the title is a little more important. And let's see, I like the like count and I usually like the author byline. Where is that? There's author byline. Okay, so we'll just apply that and we can add those columns in here. Woo woo, there they are. All right, so the first one uh, is this promoted state, right? So for whatever reason, uh, in their wisdom, they decided that they would distinguish between news and site pages with this column, the promoted state. And the way it works is it's zero when it's a site page. It is one when it's an unpublished news page. So it's news that's in a draft form. And it's two when it is news. All right, so we can use that to do a few things. But that's not very helpful, right? And telling people like, oh, when it's zero, it's this. That's not great. So let's do this. We're going to format this column. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make this library a little easier to read, but we're also going to take a look at a couple of the ways that uh, I find it easy to work uh, when I'm working on new formats, right? So I'm going to switch to advanced mode. So I can just write this here. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on. So yeah, let's make it just a little bigger even. There we go. So the first thing we do is we need an Elm type, All right, That's the box that holds things. So we're going to say it's a div, All right? And then we're going to say attributes because the one and the zero don't mean anything. It would be better if we had an icon instead, right? And so if we wanted an icon, we could come over here and we say, you know, what's a good uh, page, right? So we've got all these pages. I'm on flycon.io, and here's one, file.aspx. Sounds great. Has an icon name, so I can come back here to this guy, and I can say, boom, and if I preview that, well, now I have an icon. Not very helpful just yet, but let's make it a little more helpful. Uh, let's also make sure so we can see it. So we're going to do that with a class. And we're just going to say the uh, MS font, say MS font size is XXL. All right, so let's preview that. There we go. Now it's a little bigger. We can actually see it. Very exciting. But let's make that, uh, you know, be a little better. So let's put a title in there. So we have like a tooltip. And this case, we'll just put news. All right, so now if we preview that, we get that. Now that's actually not accurate, right? Since these are site pages and those are news. So let's make that a little bit conditional. So we do that. When we run to write an expression, we want to start with equal sign, and then we're going to write an expression. So in this case, we're going to say if we're going to look at the promoted state column, 
I could just say current field because that's what I'm on. But just for clarity, I'm going to say promoted state directly so we can see what the internal field looks like. I'm going to say if it equals zero, well, then that is when I want you to do that file ASPX, right? And we want to put that in single quotes. And then if it's not, then I want you to do something else, right? So in this case, let's go get another icon. And let's head on back over here and let's just search for news. And there's one beautiful news, catchy name. All right, we'll just paste that in there. News, now we preview that. Now we get news here. Now we're still not distinguished between promoted state. So when you want to do that, there's no real switch statement. Uh, so what you want to do is just nest your if statement, right? So the, the way the if statement works is here's your condition, followed by a comma, this is the true value, and then this is the false value. So what we want to do is instead of a false value now, we actually want to put another if statement. So we'll just say if, and we'll just repeat our promoted state. It was one this time. Well, instead of news, we want to do something else. We'll just put a comma, and then we'll add another parenthesis here to show our nested. Let's go back to our, we're just going to grab just for simplicity, the news search, just to have a slightly different icon. And we'll just place that in there. And now we preview that. And now we can see that now we've got a different icon, and that's okay. But I want to repeat this uh, same kind of logic, right? So one of the things I do is, um, when you write these kind of if statements, a lot of times you want to set multiple properties conditionally. And there's no real way to set like a variable where I evaluate this just once. So I have to reevaluate that each time I want to set something conditionally. So write it once and then cut and paste, right? So let's grab this. Let's copy that. So instead of title, let's just paste this in here. And we can say instead of file ASPX, right? We can do the exact same thing. We can say, uh, you know, site page. And they'll come over here instead of news search. We're going to say news draft. And then news is fine for that one. Okay, so let's preview that. And now we hover over it and we get our tool tip. All right, so we didn't have to rewrite all that again. We just replaced the true false values. And now if we want to convert this, the class, right? So maybe we want to do colors or something like that into um, an expression. We can write an equals stick thing. And then we might have wrapped this in quotes. We need a space because we're going to add an extra thing. We're going to say plus to add to our string. And let's get rid of that extra equals. All right. And in this case, I want to put a MS uh, font color dash, and then we're going to determine what that font color is. And for us, we want to say, hey, if uh, you're the site page, we're going to say theme primary. All right. And if you're the news in draft, we're going to say you're a neutral primary. And then finally, if you are actually news, then we're going to say you're theme secondary. So you could put in whatever values you want there. If you don't want them to be theme-based, we've got all sorts of other colors for you. But there you go. So there's something nice for us. Um, and that's a lot easier to understand uh, than just a zero, one, or two. And it also gives us something to work with there. Now, one thing I like to do also is, let's save that, uh, just so we can see, is I want it to be right aligned, right? So one of the things I like to do is use Flexbox. And the easiest way to use Flexbox in the Edge browser, right, is just go ahead and add a display style of flex. That's not going to change anything just yet, but what I like to do that for is because when I want to mess with the flex box, I hit, uh, you know, I go for my dev tools here, which we don't need to do a whole lot with them. I know it looks a little scary, but you can click this guy right up here and you click on it and you say, hey, you, there you are, right? I don't know what's going on. There. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's try that again. Let me click on the right thing. Okay, click on the correct thing. Uh, let's see if I click on it. There it is. Okay, so now I see how we've got this. Actually, click on that guy. See where this little flex icon is? You can click that and you can adjust flex properties here. So I don't have to know all these fancy properties for flex, right? But if I wanted to say, yeah, can you uh, put it over to the right? I could say, oh, flex end. That's how I'm going to do that. And you can see that it says justify content flex end. Well, I can do that. All right, so I come in here and I say justify content, and I say flex int. When I preview that, hey, it worked. So now I don't need these scary tools anymore. But that's how I figured out how the flexbox would work for me without having to really know flexbox. All right, so that's great. We'll save that, and then we're going to move that over because that's the reason we did that is because we're going to bring this all the way over because I don't find this particular thing helpful, this type. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to my show hide columns and I'm going to remove type and hit apply. And then I've got my promoted state right up front. You can see the name and I'm actually going to bring title over because I think title is better than the uh, file name. 
Let's bring that over like that. File name is helpful and it's got these extra fields, so we don't want to lose it necessarily. Uh, but that's important. Okay, so that's cool. So now we've made that a little bit better. Let's go a little further, shall we? I think we shall because, um, yeah, I'm running this thing. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at that author byline, right? So we've got the modified by and we've got the created um, information, but a lot of times the modified by uh, isn't always the same as the author byline, right? And you may not always have an author byline. So the author byline refers to, if we look at this page, right, this is what happens here. So in there, when you add a user here, that's the author byline, which isn't necessarily the person who wrote the article, right? It might be your CEO writing his uh, weekly blog post that's really written by his administrative assistant, right, and published by you. So, but that information is still helpful because that acts as the owner. So what I want to do here is I want to take a look at how we could take an existing sample and kind of apply it here. So we're going to say format that, and let's head over to our list formatting repo. And these are organized by column samples, view samples, form samples, and column samples. And these are organized by the column type. This is a person column. So I'm just going to scroll down until these things start to say person on them. And let's grab the person hover card. And I'm just going to click on the JSON file and hit the copy button. And come over here. And while I don't necessarily know everything it does, I can copy and paste it here. Um, one thing we'll notice is it doesn't really work because for whatever reason, editor is hard coded in there. That's the modified by. So we can hit control F because this is the Monaco editor and we can see wherever this is editor and we can do this little drop down. We can replace it with at current field, right? And we'll just replace that everywhere. And then we'll do some small cleanup to remove that extra uh, square bracket on there. And when we've done that, we say preview and boom, but there we go. Now we've got, it's actually pulling in that author byline. The only other thing we want to add here is we don't want it to show anything when the author by line isn't set. So we'll just add a style and we'll add a display and we'll say uh, equals if at current field, right? So it has a value. Then, uh, you know, let's do uh, inherit or something like that, right? So it just keeps it. Otherwise, let's do none. And then let's preview that. Boom. So we just took um, a sample that's meant for something else, and we just were able to customize it by only changing a couple things and using that find and replace. So let's save that. That's helpful. And now let's do another one here. All right. So let's come over here to our banner image. All right. So we've got this banner image URL. And so this refers to that image that's at the very top of the page. All right. And the URL, very helpful to have that, right? But it'd be much more helpful if we could actually see the image. So again, if we head back over here, and we'll go back to our column samples. Uh, this this column type, if we take a look here, we go to column settings and we hit edit. Can't do a whole lot with it, but it's a hyperlink column, right? So it's one of those picture columns. So you come down here, we could find a picture, but I actually really like uh, this image light box sample. So let's grab the image light box, click that, and we're going to copy this. But this actually is a sample intended for an image column type, right? So it's not going to work by default, but we're going to customize it so that it does. Okay, we'll preview that. Burp, it's all broken, as expected, because it's trying to pull in from an image type, right? Now, one thing to note is normally you would access the uh, description by saying DSC, but because this is the banner image, no one ever sets that. So we'll just get rid of the, uh, the tooltip altogether. Now come down here, wherever it says source, we just want it to be current field because that is the URL. And then we'll come down here. We've got it again here. And we're going to say all this extra stuff. We don't need that. And again, we don't need the tooltip because this tooltip will just be the URL. If we preview that. Now we start to see something a little better. All right. And in fact, we can click it and we can see this. It looks a little weird for a second, but that's because uh, previously we relied on that sample to size our image for us. And so we're just going to size it ourselves by adding a quick uh, thing here. We're going to say style and we're going to say max height or wax width is 100 percent right fit in that tiny little box and we want to put our max height also at 100 percent we like that how exciting okay so preview that there we go so that was a little better let's save that we get rid of that because that's messing up some of our spacing but now we get the banner image we can actually see that a lot more detail and that's cool that looks a little better that also associates that visually with that page right um, so we can begin to see things a little better. So let's bring that. Let's maybe bring that one back over here because I think that's more helpful to have here. And then let's bring the uh, author byline here. 
also. Okay, and the last one uh, is this like count. All right, so let's do something with the like count. So the like count is not uh, likes like everywhere else, because, you know, the site pages is a silly little library. Uh, so what we're going to do here in the like count is I'm just going to copy and paste um, a sample here that I've got. So we can wrap this up and I can get to cooking that turkey. All right, so let's preview that. And the main thing I want to note here is, so this is a quick sample. All it's really doing um, is adding an icon and it's, it's got two spans. There's an icon and then the actual count of likes. One thing to note is that until someone has liked it, the, it is a blank value, right, like we saw. Uh, so what you want to just do is check if it's a blank value and then show zero, right, in that case. Um, and then if you're not going to show it, or you're going to show a different color like I've done. Zero is a valid value, right? So if someone unlikes it. Uh, so you just want to make sure that uh, you're not just relying on that same check there and you want to check if it's greater than zero. Okay. Now, again, this, this wasn't really the point. The point was just to point out that likes are a little bit different. The idea here is just for a few column formats, we could start to see that we can make this a much more usable library. Right, and we could go a lot further uh, by using grouping and some of the other things we want to do there. Uh, you know, several people like uh, Sue Hanley and some other people have put together some uh, pretty cool uh, things they suggest for your default views um, in here for authors to make this a little better. And I'm suggesting that column formatting can go a long way with it as well. Okay, so all that, let's head back to our slides, which are a little less fancy, but still uh, still slides. So there we go. All right, so a couple of reminders. The separate types of content, if only there were some way to separate types of content, like a content, I don't know, whatever. But they are denoted by promoted state in the site pages library. Uh, so you'll want to use that, right? And then the gallery view cannot be customized, and that like count is not the same as likes elsewhere. So when you go to our sample repo and you're like, oh, I want to apply one of our likes uh, samples to it, it's not going to be the same because we don't get things like likes count and liked by behind the scenes using the rating stuff. Instead, we get this internal column called likes. So just keep that in mind. And then lastly, here's a reminder of what those promoted state values mean. Um, and I highly recommend, even if you don't like the icon idea, but finding a way to denote that. Um, even if you're grouping by it, you can apply some of those group props. Um, I always find icons and colors make it a lot quicker to find stuff. But if you'd rather add the text, um, I suggest that. I, I would never suggest showing those 0, 1, and 2 to authors, though, because that's just as... That's just confusing. Okay, so lastly, here's some resources for you to check out on this nice Thanksgiving day and be thankful for. These are the three samples we looked at. Uh, so you can take a look at those and uh, check out that tool if you want to find some icons. And of course, the documentation is there. And uh, that's it for me. Woo! Awesome, Chris. Everybody's happy. So thank you for sharing your amazing list formatting magic. Mm -hmm.